What is a defense mechanism and how does it work? Think about them as filters. Uh, filters that are changing your perception of people, of the situation, of the world itself, like a pair of sunglasses. Sunglasses might be brown, might be yellow, might be green, might be pink, any color you want. So when you wear your sunglasses, you can see everything and everyone in every situation differently from the person who is wearing different sunglasses. We all have some type of childhood trauma and we all have our unique sunglasses. That's why it is so hard to understand, to fully understand each other. Uh, an example, let's say there is a couple. The girl is wearing pink sunglasses and sees everything in pink. Her world is beautiful, uh, pinkish, happy and um, shiny. And her boyfriend is wearing black sunglasses and his world is organized, goal oriented. Uh, he sees everything in categories. He is very critical person. So they have a very small chance of being happy in their relationship. It will be extremely hard for them to understand each other and to create a happy relationship. It will be extremely challenging for them to relate to each other. Uh, I can share another example of how those defense mechanisms or filters work. Uh, just think about your cell phone. When you take a picture of yourself, you apply several filters before you post it on Instagram or Facebook. And you don't pick just random filters. You are trying to create a specific image of yourself. So you want to have a specific image that you want to present to this world. And this image might not be true you. This image is just the presentation of what you want people to see in you. So when you are posting some pictures on Facebook, in reality, if you apply multiple filters, you're kind of hiding the true self behind this picture. You're just showing people uh, the nice image of yourself. But what really happens to you, you prefer not to show. We are afraid to be vulnerable. We are afraid to show our emotions because we are afraid of being judged. Even before applying filters, you can sort through 10, 20, 30 photos before you find the one that you like. And this image usually is a mask that we are putting on to hide our true self. Uh, the main reason for that is because we are afraid to feel pain again. We are afraid to be criticized. We are afraid that people about what people will say or think about us. And we are not willing to go and face the same pain that we once had in our childhood. How can people be aware of those filters and how can we recognize them? Not all filters are bad. Some of them are good and actually useful. Some filters can uh, help us to avoid unnecessary risks in life. Some people can help us to see the enemy and to protect our boundaries. So not all filters are bad. And each of us has hundreds of filters. And it's not possible to recognize all of them. We don't actually need to recognize all of them. The most important thing is to be aware of those filters that are stopping us from being happy, successful, healthy, and create the life that we want. So you need to pay attention to the repetitive, negative events in your life. Uh, then you can get some idea that maybe in those specific situations you're using some specific filters or some specific behavior patterns, belief system that is not letting you to overcome the challenges in your life. For example, I had a client, a woman who was falling in love with unsuccessful guys all her life. She came to me when she was 54. 
uh, all her boyfriends and two ex-husbands struggled financially. She was the one who was taking care of all the bills of most families expense, family expenses. She was paying for vacations, for kids' activities, uh, mortgages, cars, etc. So she came to me and she said that she started uh, of dating uh, financial and successful guys. She started of being responsible for all the bills in her life. When I asked her about her childhood, she told me that when she was 11 years old, her father received an offer from a very well-paid job in another state. He accepted uh, the offer and had to leave for two years in another state. Yes, he called his daughter regularly. He was always home for birthdays and holidays. But the girl missed her daddy so much that she created a filter or, in other words, a belief system, which she called money destroys relationship, money destroys love. So every time she met a successful man, she was turning away from him. She was attracted only to poor, financially unsuccessful guys, and it was all subconscious. It was not her goal. It, she did it without even realizing that she was doing it. Uh, a few times in her life, she was actually dating a well-established guys, but those relationships did not last long. She was losing interest in them quickly. So from this example, you can see how the inner child who was hurt back in a childhood can Mm, affect our current life, how the inner child can stop us from creating relationships or even find the partner that we want. And although oh, she, this woman from this example, was 54, her inner child was still in pain. Her inner child still remembers the pain and was avoiding the pain by avoiding successful men in her life. So her emotional wound uh, is so deep that subconsciously she is, um, she is ignoring well-established and confident men. She is afraid to be left alone as she was when her father left her. So the pain that money will take her men away is still big. It's somewhere deep on her subconscious level that this pain dictates uh, her behavior and uh, for years she's been struggling without understanding why. So to summarize, when you are looking at your life, when you are trying to identify repetitive events, um, try to think about your childhood and how your life can be related to your childhood it can be something in your relationships it can be something related to your career uh, let me actually give you uh, a few more examples and hopefully those examples help, can help you to be uh, more aware of your own life example number one a woman who falls in love with emotionally unavailable men uh, maybe this guy is dating another uh, woman, or maybe he's married, or maybe he's still emotionally attached to his ex. Uh, example number two, a person who can um, start several projects but never finishes them. Example number three, a person who ends up with friends who are using them over and over friends are lying to this person or betraying him or not keeping their words another example a person who wants to move to another city another state another country but never tries uh, and the last example that um, i would like to share with you is a person who wants to start a healthy lifestyle a person who wants to eat healthy go to gym uh, a person who wants to lose weight and then suddenly after two three four weeks he gives up and gain even more weight 
And this is a very common example, uh, especially for the United States. And I have a separate webinar where I talk a little bit more in detail about how food helps us to suppress our emotions, our pain. And um, I recommend you to watch the webinar, which is called Tell Me What You Eat and I Tell You What Problems You Have. Basically, based on the type of food that you like to eat, we can identify what emotions, what trauma you're trying to suppress. And I will leave the link to that webinar, free webinar, below this video. Please watch it. How hard is it to let go of our filters? It depends on the depth of the childhood trauma. Often we can't let go of our filters because we don't realize that we have them. Uh, in the TV series Sex in the City, uh, the main character, Carrie, was struggling to find true love in her life. Every time she ended up in relationships that did not work out. Carrie was complaining to her therapist how unlucky she was in love. She was complaining that all her relationships are ending up the same way. The therapist mentioned to her that all the men that she was dating were different people. Uh, different love stories, different events, but the one element was always the same. And this element was her. The therapist suggested that perhaps there is something in her behavior that causes the same outcome over and over again. Carrie rejected that idea completely and never went back to the same therapist. Uh, as you can see from this movie, from this example, uh, it's not easy to recognize our filters. Even when the therapist mentioned them to Carrie in a very polite and very respectful way, Carrie became defensive and did not even want to consider this idea. Uh, and as we can see, it's not easy to let go of our filters. In most cases, a person must hit the bottom really, really hard in order to recognize that something is wrong, something there is something that has to be changed. It is extremely difficult to do it on your own. In the show, unfortunately, the therapist was not able to help Carrie to see her filters. But this is a TV show. In reality, working with a therapist can be extremely helpful and extremely effective. A therapist can provide emotional support and guide a person through the whole process. A therapist can find the, the proper words and the, the proper examples how to help a person to heal his inner child.